Hey, I'm Tabitha. And I'm Sarah. We are the Wine Moms Podcast. Where we talk about the frantic funnies and fails of parenting. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to our village. Cheers, mamas. Cheers. So, what was your weekend like? Um, it was nice. I'm still eating Halloween candy. Even though I regret it and don't at the same time. <laughs> Being in your 30s is weird. I know. Like, no matter what, eating a little bit of Halloween candy is like eating a whole lot of it when you're a teenager. Because, you know, you're 30 and nothing goes away. Nothing. <laughs> And nothing would hurt after eating, you know, a dozen Reese peanut butter cups. But now everything hurts. You're like, ow, I shouldn't have done that. Why is this mini good bar destroying my stomach? Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did your kids like Halloween? Oh, yeah. Is- yeah. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we didn't go very many places, but we had a lot of fun. Yeah. We, we a lot skipped of candy. all going out. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Aww. yeah that's like the hardest thing i decided you know the kids aren't going out at all and i, I bought way too much candy but you know they enjoyed it because we did the scavenger hunt and halloween edition of easter egg hunt which was me spray painting easter eggs black and then the little adorable duck on the outside of him didn't look so cute anymore he looked kind of possessed you know that sounds it's all terrifying for the fun. <laughs> and how would they it. find black eggs oh my gosh that was the best part like <laughs> we we turned on a hat like one far away light um and then i helped i helped veda because she's only four with my phone but i didn't like shine the light straight on straight on them she did really good she just got to the point where she started kicking her foot to try to find the eggs <laughs> That's that's a good method. Yeah, so she found yeah. quite a bit, but they did really good. Um, Kylie did great. Uh, Parker didn't do that great, but he's not really good at Easter egg hunts to begin with. So, but they had fun. The scavenger hunt, I think, was their favorite because I had it all throughout the house, and they got games at the end, so that was cool. But that sounds a lot more fun than just <laughs> begging for candy, right? Like, Kylie's never been a fan of going door-to-door. She likes handing out candy, so I think this was more eventful for her. Um, We had to do the uh, 7 o'clock Walmart run for a costume because her costume didn't fit. It was too big. That was fun. Because I was already in my witchy heels. That happens. So It's okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's the the crazy. So, what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking sangria from Costco, because I'm basic. Costco! <laughs> I wish we had one. I don't have a Costco here. <sighs> I live at Costco for Costco. Like, it's the only place you can buy giant bottles of wine and not feel guilty, because everything's giant. <laughs> Even if you're the only person that drinks wine in the house, it's quite acceptable, because <laughs> Costco sells it. Like, come on. What are you drinking tonight? I am drinking a red velvet sweet red wine. It's really delicious. It's a St. James winery wine, which I thought was from Illinois, but it's not. It's Missouri. I thought I was supporting local. Yeah, it's close (laughs) enough. Close enough. I know I've driven past it on a road trip a couple of times. Yeah, I think I've driven past it. Like, you know, my many road trips. In Missouri, no. <laughs> so we both have a fruity red wine tonight. Yes. Yeah. I'm not Mine's probably it. more fruity. I like mine. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan of berry, though. So sangria is, like, right up my alley. Yeah, red's usually you my know. my go-to. Mm-hmm. I'm usually the the white wine person, but lately red wine is, like, my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. But not, you know. I feel like sometimes red wine's a little stronger, and um, considering what we're dealing with in this day and age, (laughs) we need all the help we can get. 
Yeah, I bought four bottles of red wine, and I'm not a big red wine drinker, so you know something's going on. (laughs) I remember the person, it was at Target, too, because, you know, like, I'm only shopping very few places if I go out in public, so it's like, don't judge my cart right now, you know, and, like, some people look at you with shade, and other people look at you like, I understand. I get you, you know? Like, yeah, 2020... And parenting is just like absolute garbage. Like our podcast today, pandemic parenting, because Lord knows this isn't normal. <laughs> Unless no, you were living during the normal. Spanish flu. But mm-hmm. And if you were, you're a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> if you're parenting during it, yes, yes, you were. You you uh please give us your tips. We need those. <laughs> Because we are failing. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes. So, oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah, no, I don't. How do you feel that the pandemic has, like, been for you parenting? Like, you have you have three kids. They range in ages, you know, all in school. Well, except for sweet Emmy, but kind of um, The biggest word is, uh, the, that comes to mind would be challenging and oh shit, am I making the right choices? Constantly. <laughs> Constantly. Yeah. Because like, it's not, you're, it's like you're learning everything all over again. Yeah. And you can't just send them to school. Like, you have a bad morning and you're like, I will talk to you after school. Because, like, you are the school. And the mom. You know? It's like all in your house. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I think my word this year... Ball game. Flexibility, you know, like, I never thought I would say that I have no time when we're all stuck at home, right? Like, with having four kids, 15 to five months as of tomorrow, like, Lord, no, there's just no time. Like, sorry, this has to go. You, know. you don't ever leave the house, but you get nothing done. Oh my gosh. I And then I watched the home edit thinking I could be a champion organizer because I have time for that. I got some things organized. And then everything else just looks destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> I organized my plants today oh. in preparation for Christmas decorations, but that's a whole other thing. Oh. But I did organize that. I still have my Halloween decorations up. (laughs) I'm not looking forward to taking those down. (laughs) I'm not a fan of getting on ladders. I had to do that quite a bit. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's crazy. Like, Parker went to high school for a day. A day. And because they opened up, you know, late and not (laughs) the first day of school. Two positive cases of COVID. Two. One of the kids was in his class, but farther away. But that's still, you know, like, that's a huge, like, are you serious? Um, And then the football coach that day emails all of us. um, And he was like, I would really like if no football players participate in school on campus. I would like all of them to be virtual. Um, It's just not safe. We can't guarantee that they'll have the same family dynamic we have, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, man, I love you, coach. I agree with you. Because, yeah, like, unfortunately, Parker did choose to play football, but he wears a face mask the whole time. And they they are always separated. You know, they're always six feet apart. And I can even hear the coaches from the field screaming, stay six feet apart. Um, So all the boys are pretty good about that. But they are like a big family. So they, like, respect each other. Um. But yeah, no, that's just, no. My elementary school kids stayed home. My baby doesn't go to school. I'm teaching them sign language because why not? Why not? (laughs) I don't know sign language. She's already smarter than me. Aw, all my kids know little sign language. Parker had to know sign language to talk to people. It was so adorable. Just because he's shy. Jasper's not shy. Not shy. That is a problem, though, like, having kids, like, you know, infant to, like, five years old because, like, so much, 
this is like their starter years. You know, everything's based off now. And, you know, if you can't put them in school, you know, like it's like Veda school completely shut down. It's not even open anymore. Um, there's other options, but I don't trust them because they don't have the same cleaning protocols put up that the school district has, you know, and Jasper's terrified of people without a face mask on. What? <laughs> that's, that's a new one. But I yeah. see it. Yeah. Oh, like, poor baby. Yeah, I mean, like, no okay, so. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, you think about it. So at home, he sees us. Well, you go out in public, everyone's in a face mask. Or if they're not, I don't put him anywhere near them because I don't know who these people are. And because I have OCD, like a mo. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just, you know, seeing how different things could have been without the pandemic, but I don't know. Like Parker was very shy and he didn't like people. Um, y you don't know. You don't know what impact that's going to have. See Sawyer's, she just started kindergarten and I was really worried and kind of sad that he was going to experience kindergarten virtually and yeah. not in the classroom and not, you know, have story time and cafeteria and this experience with recess and everything. But he is, you know, not shy. He's very social. And yes. he's very tech savvy for only being just now six. It's so terrifying. he is a rock star when it comes to virtual learning. He knows his friend's names. He knows his teacher's name. He's it's awesome. Like, he's already reading his sight words really well and can write his numbers and all of his letters. Like, he's really really progressing along great yeah. well emmy on the other hand now she's only three but i did enroll her in preschool yeah. before the pandemic because there's a huge wait list and she did get in and it started off virtual and that did not work <laughs> i would turn on the computer and she'd look at it and say no and just walk oh, away. Gosh. Like, what the hell? Like, what is this? No. Yeah. And so when the option arose to send her hybrid, so two mm -hmm. days a week, that was like one of those choices that I had to make. Like, yeah, is it right or is it wrong to send her? You know, am I going to be a terrible parent for keeping her home? Oh, am I going to be a terrible parent for sending her? And I bit the bullet and sent her. <laughs> She's been going for like the last two, two and a half weeks. Uh, only two days a week, but her preschool is also very small. Yeah. Um, there's like four kids in her class. She has to wear a mask. She's only there two hours a day. Yeah. Um, and I know her teacher, so I feel a little bit more comfortable. But yeah. she loves it. She's progressed Aww. enormously. She That's cries when I pick her up. <laughs> no, mommy, she's like, no. no, mom, I don't want you anymore. Oh, so that's that's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy about that decision. Although it's a little worrisome. Yeah. Um, I, like Ava and Sawyer are still home, and I have received emails saying that there have been cases at both of their schools that they don't go to. They they are both my older ones are yeah. virtual. There have been cases in those schools, so I'm kind of yeah. waiting for that email for Emmy's preschool, like yeah, because I'm assuming a case is inevitable. But yeah, you know, especially your just, area, like it's it's really drastically increasing. Like it was my even area on, is bad right now. Yeah, Parker was crazy. like, Alexa's saying that the cases are spiking in the Midwest, and I was like, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're spiking here, too, but not to the degree that yours is, you know, like um, Arizona. We have fewer people, so I think that's the plus. Like, we are, I do live in a large city, but, like, as a whole, Arizona has fewer people. So, I think that kind of helps us. But, yeah, no, it's hard. Like, you know, the football choice, um, I even talked with the head coach and the director of athletics because I just wasn't having it. You know, like I was terrified, but I was leaving the choice up to Parker because to him, he wants recruited. He wants a college scholarship. He, you know, and he's getting so close. And what do I tell him? Like, sorry, kiss that goodbye. 
you know, like how different is this going to be? And finally, we just said, you know, it's your choice. Um, you do understand, you know, if, if anyone tests positive, you are quarantined to your room. You don't see any of us, you know, and he, he opted to do it. And I think it's been good for him because, you know, he's getting out. That's the only time it gets out <laughs> is for football because yeah. he's, he's home now. And Kylie's been setting up virtual calls with her friends because, you know, she's a fifth grader. and She's on call all the time with Ava. Yeah, yeah. They talk like, all the time. It's so cute. I was like, I swear you two talk more now than you did prior to this pandemic, right? Like, mm-hmm. which I think is good. They're, I think they are really getting, like, bonding more. And then you have Veda. She can't online school. Like, she has that issue where, like, the first 10 minutes, she won't talk. And then there's only five minutes left to class, and she doesn't understand why no one lets her talk, and that it's teacher's time to talk. And she can't go to class because, like, even at home, she can't not touch. (laughs) Like, she's a toucher in all shapes and forms, and... I'm like, you can't touch things when we go to the store. And she'll be like, yeah, I can't touch things when we go to the store. And we'll take her, like, to the doctor's office. And, like, there she is just running her hand down the wall. And I'm like, really? You just, you you know. So it's like, it's not safe. I would really like. So I'm homeschooling that one. That's not going well either. She's high maintenance. And she is very, I do remember her being very, like, sensory sensitive i guess might be yeah. the phrase she did like to touch everything everything, everything. <laughs> Every, in march i took her to the store and i think i've only taken her to the store one other time since then and i was like okay we're gonna go and you can't touch anything or i have to put this hand sanitizer on your hands and she didn't like the smell of it so i assumed we were good right no Oh my, why are you touching a vegetable you don't like? Why are you touching that? You don't like it. Please don't touch the bottles of alcohol. Like, you know, and I'm just like, and I was pregnant, you know, and I'm waddling behind her, chasing her, telling her, don't touch anything. And I'm just like, (laughs) you're never going to the store again because we don't have enough hand sanitizer. (laughs) You know, it's just, and it's hard. She still sees with her eyes. Yeah, that's that. And it, it, like, and as a parent, you look at it like, how much am I harming my kid by not giving them the social inter- you know, interaction that they need? Like, I, I know I need it. Is risk worth the reward, you know, and, and vice yeah. versa? You know, yeah. is keeping them home worth it? Is sending them out into the world worth it? It's, there's, yeah. no, there's no easy answer. No, there's not. Like, there's all these studies so far, and all of them are inconclusive about babies and you know, the zero to five range, the preschool range. And they're just like, you know, do virtual calls, write letters to families, you know, and it's like, yeah, but it's so different. Like, please do not smack somebody because you want something, (laughs) you know, especially if they don't have littles around at home, you know, they don't have, they don't learn those social skills that would be taught in a school setting or a preschool setting or even daycare. Um, So, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely like, it's terrible. Um, and then you have the dreaded impact for the older kids. Yeah, I um, think my my 12-year-old adolescent is becoming more and more feral by the day and kind of yeah. just hibernating might be the word. Yeah. Like she she's cool. she doesn't change her clothes, she doesn't shower. She doesn't even, like, leave her room and I'll, like, yeah. go into her room and turn on the light and she sits up, like, <laughs> like a siren's going off. Like, why Why would you turn on the light? Why, why are you here? What's going on? And I'm like, I'm just here to say hi and have you eaten today? Yeah. Have you, have you showered? Are you alive? I don't alive? think you have. Um, <laughs> like. I'm still here. Yeah. It's, it's all mundane, right? Like, even for us, like, I feel like I go to bed stupid late. I wake up at the crack of dawn because of the littles. And it's, you know, feed them breakfast, make sure all of them are in school, feed them lunch, possibly try to take a nap with the baby because, good Lord, I didn't get enough sleep last night. 
you know, like take them on a small walk because please get your energy out and, you know, and then you start the whole process again and again and again. And I, don't, I think that was the best thing for Halloween is just kind of breaking that monotony. But yeah, like even my 10 year old, she doesn't want to shower or she does it's 10 o'clock at night and I've been screaming at her for an hour to go to bed. Um, you know, she doesn't want to wake up in the morning. She just growls, literally, you know, that like. Uh, the growls too. It's weird. Yeah, <laughs> like, dude, what you, you know, the whole feral thing. Like they're literally growling at me, um, and yeah, and like I just kind of like I don't want to push her, you know, because you don't want to push them away at this time. You know, I'm talking to her teacher, and thankfully her teacher is the sweetest thing, um, and I love her, and I'm so fearful for her because she she's a breast cancer survivor, and if she hears this, I love you, Bloom. Um, and she's in all in class, you know, and she has to worry about all these kids and everything. And I'm just like, well, if you need anything. Um, but Kylie's not like connecting so much, you know, like she has her few friends. Um, and they do video calls, but yeah, it's just it's worrisome when you see your kid just kind of succumb to the environment, you know, it's, it's rather depressing the pandemic. Um, yeah, my 15 year old doesn't leave his room all day except for football and to eat or to yell at me that he's hungry or his clothes smell, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like they're regressing or fading, fading away. Yeah. They have like, nothing to look forward to. So yeah, I, I will say we had the Halloween party this weekend. We all had a chill day. Um, and all of them woke up on time this morning. Oh yeah so I don't know if that's something to help boost moods is just kind of do something out of the norm um the monotony breaker as I should call it um but yeah no they did all of them woke up I mean Veda always wakes up at the crack of dawn like it's her job <laughs> she's like a little baby rooster <laughs> the sun is up I am up thank you Frozen for ruining my life um but yeah, no. Like seriously, if the baby's asleep, you should be asleep. That's that should be a rule. Like you don't have to go to bed at seven. <laughs> but you know, like don't wake up until he wakes up. I'm blessed with a great sleeper. But yeah, no, and it's it's scary, like just kind of giving the parents kind of some background as to why we're talking about this. Um researching this podcast, um, I cried a few times. Um which Sarah can see the notes too. Um, the number two cause of death in children age 15 to 24 is suicide. Number one is accidents. And it's currently on the rise in 2019, 2020. There isn't definite numbers. And as a parent, you look at that like, is it because COVID? Is it because the disassociation with life because the bullying is increasing? Or, you know, like what, what can we do as parents to like, is it the mental health issues is it the you know like what's what do you do as a parent <laughs> you know like yeah, exactly uh, it's just terrifying like because yeah bowling's at an all-time high everything's so well they're split. all on the computer you know the kids yeah. are on the computer all day for school yeah and they can't go anywhere. There's no activities for them. You know, yeah. there's no, you know, movie theaters aren't open. A lot of stores aren't open. Amusement parks aren't open. They can't go anywhere. They can't do anything. So they just sit on the yeah. computer. And it is like, I don't know. I, I miss having my like once a month breakfast with some of my friends, you know, like they'd get off for their morning shift and we'd go have breakfast at Denny's and I can't do that one because I have a baby and two, I'm immunocompromised. So it's like, uh, no, I don't want to eat at a restaurant, you know, like I love them, but it's too scary. And, but even I've noticed adults are even bullying more like Facebook groups and YouTube and all of that. Like people, I don't, I think it is because we don't see each other face to face that people are just so dismissive of thoughts and, what they're saying could be impactful, you know, it's like they, the they forget that. The world is dehumanizing everybody. Yeah. You like, can't look at somebody and shake their hand and, yeah. you know, 
see them. See them, yeah. Yeah, like you see a lot in a person just looking face to face. You know, like, which is why we record this podcast looking face to face. We can yeah. read each other, you know, we can feel what the other person's feeling in a way. Um, yeah, like I had to tell somebody, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I had to tell somebody that their words were not kind, how they said things and um, just saying, you know, like you should kind of like look back and kind of read what you said. It just wasn't the nicest, you know, I'm not mad at you, but just like know that this wasn't like the best thing to say and they just didn't grasp it. It's like you don't understand, like you're losing your humanity by just talking solely online. Right? Like you, if you can't read a person's face, you don't understand what you're saying can be taken and packed like in a negative light. Like, um, you can't read emotion. You and then hear people emotion. might also just want the drama. Oh, yeah. Their life is so boring. My life, I mean, I feel like I'm a chicken with my head chopped off half the time. <laughs> but. How are you so you know, bored, people? <laughs> yeah, but but you, they're giving themselves that variety or that drama, that yeah. spice in their life by yeah, being an like asshole. So much you can watch on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I've thought about that too. Like the troll level has increased gratefully, whether it be within children or adults, like or both, child adults. Um. It's just, it's nasty. Like, you know, you, you want to everyone band together and we're all in this together. Um, and there's just so much negativity towards everyone now. Like, I, I can't even, like, I, I, I don't know. It's hard enough. Like, I feel bad, like, all, like, the homeschool parents. Like, because they're all, like, you know, they hear all of us complain now about how hard homeschooling is. And I bet they're all sitting there, like... <laughs> Y'all thought we did nothing. <laughs> yeah, the, the parents that were homeschooling to begin with Y'all are, are the amazing. ones that are coasting through this. Yeah, they're like, hold my beer. Yeah. You know, like, they're like let me show you some tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pro. <laughs> I got you. You know, like I I can't even I, I've watched YouTube videos from like four years ago about a day in the life homeschooling and I just look at it like how do you function? And I've, it's almost been a year, Sarah, it's almost been a year in this crap of a pandemic. I refuse, I refuse <laughs> to acknowledge that. <laughs> what are you talking about? It is April 1st. It's been two weeks. <laughs> We're not going into Christmas during a pan. Uh, it's hard enough doing things, or it's hard enough doing Halloween in a pandemic. And then I'm like, Thanksgiving? Well, for me, it's no different because, like, you know, we've lived alone in the state for years. We have the grandparents, but they shouldn't go anywhere because they're old. So, <laughs> you know, we have yeah. them. But, like, other people, like, I talked to, well, yeah, I talked to Kylie's teacher, and she told me, you know, they, they're canceling all of it. You know, and just hearing the sadness, you know, from her. Because, like, she goes to school, she goes home, she does nothing. She goes to school, she comes home. You know, it's this back and forth. And then not having anything to, like, brighten. I think that's why I bought 50 house plants in April. Yeah, truth. <laughs> you really went above and beyond being a plant mom. I had... I need to say that. Not a single plant a year ago. Yeah. Well, because you came down in February. You bought three plants? I bought three. You bought three, and you're all worried about getting them February. home. I taught you how to transplant plants. And then, in like a month, you had more plants than me, almost. Which is I've impressive, because I had 30 plants. I've also <laughs> killed a lot. But I'm still I'm still ranging between like 30 and 40. Y'all, Sarah bought plant lights before I did, and I've been planting I for have a long one, time. I have one, two, three, four grow lights. <laughs> and four. Four humidifiers. <laughs> and I bought three plant... Like, I got one big plant shelf, and then I've got, like, three other plant stands. Yeah. And oh. I'm propagating six. 
my neighbor two doors down, I noticed, has really gotten at the plant game, too. Like, her whole porch is now full of plants. And I'm assuming it's because she has a lot of dogs. We can't talk anymore because, like, we used to talk in the morning while walking. But, you know, now that's, like, difficult. Um, but, yeah, like, she's gotten a lot. And then I haven't bought a lot of plants because, you know... So we plan on moving, and I'm like, I really don't know how I'm going to move all my plants. You know what I'm going to do? I have a giant monstera. Giant. It's taller than my four-year-old. <laughs> I'm going to buy, like, you know, those clothing boxes from Home Depot where you can hang your clothes. It'll fit That's in one idea. of those boxes. That's I've literally idea. watched YouTube videos on how to move my plants. Um, because, yeah, no, buying... I think plants and now that i'm not pregnant anymore wine has been my top two you know high purchases since the pandemic yeah. hit because stress relievers i feel like if i can keep my plants alive and happy i feel better because i'm not always so sure about my parenting all the time yeah yeah i'm like they're alive i don't know if they're happy i don't know if they're learning anything the plants we can read we can know they are very you know they start turning yellow you either need a water or not water you know but you know which one you're not doing or yeah your kid they look at you and it's like is that look i love you or is that look i loathe you right like it's probably a little bit of both yeah yeah um the plant just give it sun and light and it loves you it doesn't care it's dying. It probably still loves you. It doesn't care. Plants and animals are just... <laughs> the and they don't poop and pee everywhere. Yeah. Well, animals do, but plants don't. Plants don't. They just they just live. Sometimes they bring in bugs, but they're spray for that. They're a spray. That's true. And I think... I haven't bought plants since August, so I think that's a plus. Right? Like, that, that's, that's pretty good. Better than me. I mean, I was on a track history of buying a plant every time I went out. So, but you also bought plants online. I did buy a few online. <laughs> about half of them came with spider mites, so it's 50-50. Yeah, it's no, 50 /50. I don't want that. Spider plant, spider mites killed my rubber plant. I mean, had I caught it sooner, had I not put it outside when it was 100 degrees... It was already dying, okay? <laughs> I, was, I was terrified. And at first it loved being outside in that 100 degrees, by the way. You don't live where it gets 120 degrees. But um, it loved being out there. But then, unfortunately, I forgot about it for a week and didn't water it. And it's and, 110 degrees. And no humidity. No humidity. None. Yeah. Zero. You would have to water that thing, like, every day. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> I need to water myself every day. Yeah. Like, lotion, water, lotion, water. <laughs> but yeah, no, plants are more accepting babies than our babies. Which, truth be told, we understand you babies. We're sorry, babes. I mean, all we had to do is... I dealt with a snowstorm when I was a child for a week. I did so many damn puzzles, like... I cannot even <laughs> tell you how many puzzles I did, or... How many little, like, igloos my dad and I created because the snowdrifts were so high. Um, but nothing like waving at your friends through a computer monitor. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like, and, and now, like, not so much you because you're way down south. But, you know, I'm in the Midwest and we're approaching winter now. So now, oh, like, yeah. my kids can't even go outside to scooter or... Yeah jump on the trampoline they're literally well, just going to be stuck inside i have no idea because seasonal allergy disorder is a real um it's where when hit, winter hits essentially you get depressed um my grandma had it which i didn't know about until she passed away um explain why she was so happy when she visited me in december <laughs> she just was like through the moon happy looking at all the bougainvilleas like she was touching them and like it was adorable um but uh but, yeah, it's definitely something I, I fear, like, especially with the suicide numbers, is being depressed in the winter is very common. Um, it's why so many people are decorating for Christmas already, and so many people are going all out for Halloween and Thanksgiving. is just because 
or buying so many plants. It, it's a way to make us happy, you know? To it's, find that joy. Yeah, like, yeah. and you have to find it right now. We can't, you know, if you are bound to have depression or you deal with depression on a daily basis, you know as well as anyone that you can't sit there and dwell on it because it's going to eat you. You know, it literally will eat you alive. Um, so, yeah, I definitely recommend, like, if you love Christmas, I don't care that it's only November, decorate. I really don't care. I condone it. I'm <laughs> if it makes you happy. Right now, I'm, like I said, I'm in the midst of rearranging my house because I have yeah. two Christmas trees. I've got a whole Christmas village I have to find room for. It's insane. Yeah, all those I bought a whole now. bunch of gnomes. <laughs> yes, and I have plants now. <laughs> So I have to, it's going to be like a winter jungle land in my house. That sounds dreamy, really. <laughs> like, I would live for that. Like, that's actually something my husband said today. Your brother was like, uh, yeah, how's Christmas going to look? And he looked right at my ZZ. Looked at my beautiful giant ZZ plant. And I'm like, don't look at that. <gasps> the ZZ would rock some little bitty LED twinkle lights. <gasps> That was going on. I bought them at Target. They're battery operated. They have timer. Mm. Yes, I did. I bought three sets. <laughs> you better believe my Monstera and ZZ are going to be Christmified because. Mm -mm. Heck yes. 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 That's awesome. But yeah, I don't know. I'm like a super like give holidays their time. I mean, I will do it on Black Friday like I always do. I decorate on Black Friday. Um. Probably more so this year because I highly doubt I'm going to be going out shopping on Black Friday due to the pandemic. Um, I don't know if we'll anything's see. going to be really open or mm -hmm. participating in anything. So I'll get my Dutch Brothers because I get my ornament every year. It better be a pandemic-inspired one. You <laughs> haven't experienced that. I'm sorry. But I, yeah, I love Dutch Brothers. My favorite coffee chain. If y'all are listening and you have a Dutch Bros on Black Friday... You have to get there at 5 a.m. <laughs> they have a free ornament with every purchase. We're not sponsored. Please sponsor us, Dutch Bros. I would love you forever. But um, <laughs> that's my... <laughs> <laughs> that's my... You know, I leave the kids with, you know, with the husband and I go Black Friday shopping. But essentially, it's for my Dutch Bros in the morning. Because um, I got to get that ornament. I don't know what's wrong with me. But, but yeah. No, if you need it to cheer yourself up, I don't want... We shouldn't be, I don't want anyone to be part of a statistic. You know, I want them to be happy and cheerful. Yeah. Go play in snow. Our, that's going to be our challenge this winter is keeping our kids happy. Lots of winter gear. Start buying, y'all. Get your winter gear. Stay warm. How many scarves do you need? I have scarves. Would you like one mailed to you? <laughs> yes, because I lose <laughs> scarves like I do socks, which is daily. Oh, that's terrible. Scarves, gloves. I think I buy like a dozen and they only last like yeah. a month. Beanies. Make sure your head's warm. I have a homemade one um, from a family member slash Etsy seller. She made me one that like really sweet green and blue and purple one I wear occasionally. It's so warm. It's like warmer than any other one I purchased. So I recommend that. Check out Etsy. Find some <laughs> cute <laughs> seasonal gear if you can. Because, yeah, I, I can't even... If you are also... I need to talk about this because I went through this. You know this. I went through this. <laughs> Jasper is going to be five months old tomorrow, meaning I was pregnant during the start of the pandemic. Um, and if you are about to have some quarantine babies, I'm sorry. Number one. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> number two. <laughs> it's hard not to get uh, pregnant during quarantine, apparently, because... Everyone's pregnant. Dang. I'm not. I'm knock not. on wood. Yeah. Nope. Not happening. But no. everyone else is pregnant. <laughs> yeah. We got enough. I got four. You got three. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. No, it, and it's hard. Like, okay, one, everyone's bored. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? You know how many, like, World Series babies there were when the Cubs won the World Series? I know how many. I even tweeted about that. Y'all, it happened. Um... But yeah, like I have friends that are midwives and they're just like, hello, quarantine babies. And I'm like, brace yourselves because if it's anything like when I gave birth, no one's allowed at the hospital. 
Your kids aren't even allowed at the hospital, and they somehow expect you to wear a face mask while giving birth. That which would I kind of, no, be horrific. No, my doctor <laughs> didn't even care. Thankfully, my doctor came in without a face mask on. Bless you, dude. But he, uh, <laughs> I did not wear it during delivery. I wore it the rest of the time. And then when I was in my recovery room, they said that it's your choice. If you don't want to wear one, you don't have to. We'll still wear one. And I didn't in there because I didn't want Jasper's experience with my face to be a face mask. You know, because that's terrible. It's hard enough he's going to grow up like this. Yeah. Um, But yeah, no, it's it was hard, like mentally. Part of me liked it because, you know, being a mom of so many children and... I remember giving birth to my first two and, you know, everyone's in and out of the hospital, which is nice. Everyone gets to meet the baby, but (laughs) big butt there. (laughs) No one's knocking on my door at 8 a.m. besides the nurse. No one's staying past last call. No one's just hanging out in the room, touching your baby. And you're like, have you been sick lately? Have you gotten your shots that you need to have? You know, um, that you have was that friend. Nice. You have that friend that you haven't seen in three years. Just pop by, go hey, yeah, and just like, go straight for your baby. And it's like really, yeah. I don't want you to touch my baby. Get away from me. Yeah, no, that's literally that's literally what it was like. So it was weird for me. One, having a child in a different state. So all my other children were born in Illinois, so that was new. And then two, just being alone. Like it was just him and I. You know, I had like the most happy experience with my newborn baby you know I felt like I was able to post pictures online when he was born I didn't feel bogged down by having people there and I made friends with my nurses which my recovery nurses my delivery nurse can go fly a kite for all I care she was the meanest old woman um (laughs) but but yeah like if you are about to have a kid in the pandemic one order everything online (laughs) stay safe everything just and it's all there or have an awesome sister-in-law that just brings you a tote full of things because that was cool <laughs> right <laughs> I filled up half my van with shit and yeah it was all right uh yeah so yeah just and try to get as much as you can early like i'm so happy i had newborn well i even had preemie though it turns out my baby was giant i had preemie all the way up to now which Again, he's still giant. He's in six to nine month, but 12 month pants. But now I'm buying clothes for him. So my sister's also pregnant. She has a quarantine baby coming. Like I said, it's hard to not get pregnant during this quarantine, apparently. Evidently. Like, do y'all know what condoms are? Just saying. Or birth control. Not that it's any of our business, but (laughs) just... (laughs) I've done genealogy. Let me tell you, back in the early 1900s, too many kids. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, just if you are pregnant during the pandemic, one, we are here with you. I've been through it. Um, and two, just be safe. Have fun. Mm. Enjoy the little things, especially if it's your first. I can't imagine it being your first during this. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, especially if you're in like a hella like pandemic state. Like, yeah, it's like, how do you Illinois. plan a baby shower? You know, you yeah. want to be around all of these people and do all of these things. You want to hit all the big mega sales. Yeah. And travel to all the big baby stores. Yeah. You can't do that. Carter's delivers. Just so you know. Like, they, they Not here. <gasps> <gasps> I'm sorry. Dang. Girl, that's terrible. I was so bummed. So... When pregnant, in December, I seen there was a Carter's opening in the mall next to my house. Not next to it, but you know. It's a Carter's slash Oshkosh. Baby boy Oshkosh stuff is the cutest stinking stuff. Anywho. But then the pandemic hits. The store is open, and I'm not going to a damn mall. Like, (laughs) it's... No. Get away from me. Don't touch me. Stay away from me. Please don't touch me. So, yeah, that's... But they do deliver to my house. I'm sorry that they don't deliver to you. That's terrible. I'm sorry. I mean, I can order online, but it takes forever. Yeah. And then I they... can do store pickup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a standalone store, but but yeah. Like, that's... I, I can't even. So, but yeah. 
parents were with you. We know how much it sucks. We have kids of all ages. Literally. All <laughs> ages now. <laughs> we have a kid in every adolescent stage. Yep. You realize that? Like, yep. I have a full-blown teenager who's going to be able to drive legally in two months. By the way, that's how old your nephew is. Don't remind me. <laughs> we have our preteens. We have our elementary. You have Sawyer and Emmy's going to be Irveda's right there. We have the full-on preschool with Emmy. And then we have the infant with Jasper. So we know all the stages now. Like, Lord. And let me tell you, a 15-year-old during a pandemic, there ain't much you can do. essentially what i have to say if you have a full-blown teenager 15 and older may the odds be ever in your favor because (laughs) tell them not to go to parties just have them voice call people what video call make tiktoks make tiktoks why is that you know right that's a cool thing that's what ava does or she tries to Kylie's been making them for her, by the way. (laughs) Kylie's been making videos for Ava. (laughs) Ava's not very good. Like, at figuring out what to do. Yeah, I walked in. I was like, what in the heck are you doing? Kylie's like, what? I'm making a video for Ava. And I was like, wait, what? Like, all of it just kind of, like, blew me away. Like, wait, what? What what did you say? She's like, duh. Hello. Also, what? Ha- why is my 10-year-old acting like a full-blown teenager? Is that because of the pandemic? Because she Probably. sees all these videos? Like, I was not ready for that attitude switch. The light bulb. Mm, no. Well, my 6-year-old acts like he's 12. Yeah. We have to, like... Yeah, all I know is, like, to entertain your kids. It worked for mine. But, like, have a random scavenger hunt where there's, like, full-size candy bars at the end. I don't know. I put our prize in the oven. That was fun. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, like, you know, for your babies, like, go on little walks while you can. If it's super cold, bundle them up and put them in an igloo before you go on a walk. I don't know. I do not miss living in the Midwest. Just saying. Uh -uh. I can't do it. When it rains here, I get so sad. I'm not kidding. I get, like, well, I wouldn't now. I think I would cheer because we're in a massive drought. But, <laughs> like, um, yeah. I, we'll get a couple sorry, feet of y'all. snow. Yeah. Dude. It's okay. Just build an igloo, right? Like, build tunnels in the snow. Don't yeah. get run over. I did that once in my yard. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. But just make sure you have lots of hot cocoa for when it's over. I actually just bought hot cocoa. I'm going to make those hot cocoa, those chocolate hot cocoa bombs. I don't know if you've seen those Uh -uh. circulating social media. It's just like a hollow milk chocolate ball. But inside the ball is hot cocoa mix and marshmallows. And then you put it in a mug and then you pour like hot milk or hot water over it. And then it like... Pops open and the marshmallows and everything mixes in. I, I bought a mold, a silicone, yeah, sphere mold, and I, we're gonna make them. So it's gonna be fun, dude. All I'm gonna do is make pumpkin bread and blueberry muffins this week. That's my. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's pretty fire too. Yeah, baking, y'all. Seriously, my four year old likes baking. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jasper likes baking in his walker as he runs around my feet, which. Speaking of that, what do you do when your plant baby is getting injured by your actual baby? Like the time Emmy painted my prayer plant. Oh, I, I couldn't handle with, that. With Crayola like, acrylic paint. Yeah, she's just like oh. painting the leaves. Yeah, that. Mm, no, no, Jasper, he is. He only walks forward for plants and Kylie or a bottle. But his, the first time he ever walked forward, I was like, you're coming outside. <laughs> you're getting fresh air, child. I took his walker out to the front porch, and I was hanging up decorations for Halloween. And I didn't see this, but I was like, why are you faced the plants? 
Like, you weren't there before. We watch on the front porch camera, and the first time this child walks forward is when I'm not looking, and it's to get my plants. Well, they're... The little... Green. They're pretty. Yeah. They're different. He also likes goats. I think that's because I watch YouTube videos. Yeah. But no, this morning, I'm making his bottle and making my coffee and emptying the dishwasher because, you know, I have all this time. And... I look over and he's walking and I don't know why I don't say anything or I don't stop him. But my son is walking in his little walker and grabs my Monstera. Like that was his whole goal was to grab my Monstera and start rubbing his face on it. He's like, what does this taste like? (laughs) I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm like thinking, is he, you know, like what happens if he starts eating my Monstera? So I like throw everything down and I... You know, I'm, like, carefully, like, prying his little hands off. Mm. The monstera. The grips of an infant <laughs> oh are, my like, gosh. steel. And this monstera is gigantic. Like, it is huge. I've had it for almost two years. This thing has just blossomed in the past year. And I'm like, please do not break anything. Please, for the love of God, do not break my plant. Well, I'm trying so hard not to break my baby's hands off. <laughs> That's when you know you you have a problem is when you don't know how to handle your kids and plants. But but yeah, I don't know. Like for those preschool mamas, try virtual preschool. Make sure you have coffee or wine in your coffee cup, whichever one. I don't I don't care. I'm not judging you because nope. I know how hard it is. But there's tons of free preschool sites. Um, I wish there were more. Like there was in March. But but yeah, go on little walks while you can. Get outside chalk. Get like a chalkboard. Make a chalkboard. Have arts and crafts time, right? Like coloring. Or you can be like me and remove all coloring because your four-year-old draws on all the Google Homes. That was fun. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like just, yeah, six to ten. Like y'all, what? Try many workouts with your kids. PE, you know, because I know the virtual PE is a joke, but for us at least. Sawyer's learning mindfulness and yoga in his virtual school. Yeah. Nice. It's kind of baller, not going to lie. Yeah. Like, it was good at first, and now, well, my kid only has PE four days a month, five days a month. My elementary school age child. So, you know, please go jump on the trampoline. I bought a trampoline during this pandemic. You know this. I was texting you like crazy. It's like, use it, kids. Use it. Oh, they do. Uh, Kylie was walking on just kicking a basketball around. Hmm. Like, I think it was just quiet. You know, so she was away from everybody. Um, but yeah, like, buy outdoor play equipment if you can. If you live in a place where it's not going to snow 20 feet in the next month. I'm sorry if it is. Build igloos, y'all. That was the best thing about being a kid in the Midwest is you can build things in the snow. You know, you get the milk jugs or water jugs. You fill them up with water and you stick them outside and you can build anything. True. Come on, Mom. You know. (laughs) Even the, the boiling water. You throw the boiling water up in the air and... It goes yeah. poof. That's wet fun. pants. Put oh, wet pants geez. outside. I'll tell you. I made scarecrows out of Goodwill clothes when I was a kid. With leaves. It was in the, the newspaper in Bloomington, actually. That was pretty oh. cool. Hmm. Yeah, we gave them little heads and filled them full of leaves. And Don't laugh at me. It was adorable. <laughs> There's a lot of leaves on the ground now. That's a good idea. Yeah. It's... it's it's a time breaker, essentially. Like, you know, you find something, it might seem stupid to us, but I think it does help the kids kind of break that monotony of, you know, school, sleep, eat. Find something mm-hmm. to get their yeah. brain clicking again. Yeah, and if you're not on Pinterest, y'all, this is the time. My Pinterest boards are lovely. I don't look at them, but I should. <laughs> There's endless ideas. 
yeah. for everything, for food, for crafts, everything. Printouts and, yeah, just, there's tons of mamas on there that are, like, wicked smart with all of this. Um, I was a preschool teacher. You would think I'd be more on top of preschool game, but it's changed in the years. Um, but, yeah, no, Pinterest, even Facebook, don't skip by those ads for how to make things. <laughs> Or you want something really funny? How ridiculous is hilarious with the kids? It's like science and fun all at one time. But, but yeah. So, but we're with y'all. Best of luck. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should have something on our Facebook. Like, how are you entertaining your kids? Maybe we'll do that this week. Give some yeah. ideas. Or, so follow or, us on or Facebook. maybe they, our listeners, could email us. Give us Ooh. ideas. What are you doing to entertain your children? Yeah. Please? How like, are you what? handling the pandemic? How are your children handling the pandemic? How are you handling your preteen? Because mm. Lord knows I'm not doing good. The preteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let us know. <laughs> Wine Moms Pod at Gmail. Like, everything's below. But yeah, let us know. And, and yeah, we'll look over those and if you have any like pandemic fail as a parent let us know i know i have a few or any funny taking... tales anything funny or anything that's happened that's put you in a panic or yeah. made you feel a certain way let us know yeah. yeah we're here for you so but yeah how is your wine for the night mine's almost gone mine's almost gone <laughs> <laughs> I got the fruity. Is it velvety? Is it everything it promised? Yes. Mm. Velvet red, velvet smooth. No. And my little wine glass that says, not today, muggle fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I pushed away my my uh, my mama shark glass for just the plain one tonight. I need oh. to get some more fancy Keep wine glasses. Yeah. I got the simple no stem. So, yeah. But no, well, I think that's it for today. All right. Yeah. So, best of luck with you ladies, you dads, you moms, you kids, whoever is listening tonight. And we're here for you, Village. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you, Tabitha. All right. And cheers, mamas. Cheers. <laughs>